Hey, how's it going? Dave2D here, and this is a review of the brand new XPS 13 for 2018. So this thing's been redesigned. It's got a fresh new look, and the original XPS 13, or I should say the previous generation of XPS 13, that style has been around since 2015. It's been around for a while. The design has gotten a little bit old, and they finally refreshed the whole thing. So this thing now comes in a new design. It's thinner, it's lighter, and it's significantly smaller than the previous generation. I think it's something like 24% smaller than the previous generation, which is very noticeable. See, on camera or just if you look at it and pictures and stuff like that, you can't really tell, but when you hold it in person, especially if you compare it with the old one right beside it, it's a very noticeable difference in weight and in size. And I think it's a really nice looking device. So one of the best things about the XPS lineup is that they don't copy MacBooks. They just kind of make their own thing. And it's distinctly a very XPS looking machine. And I think it looks quite good. The big change though, in terms of the aesthetics is this new glass fiber weave and it looks awesome. So the original XPS 13 and 15 had this black carbon fiber material that looked really good. Honestly, I think this looks better. So the one difference though, is that this material is, it doesn't have that rubber finish that the XPS 13 and 15 had from last generation. It was almost like a soft touch material. This feels just kind of like a regular, I wanna say plastic, it's not plastic, but it feels kind of like a smoother and harder finish, which isn't as inviting to use. It's more of a technical material, but it does look really good. Now this material does have some kind of stain resistance to it. I tried putting some pen on it, it doesn't stain, like you can just wipe it off pretty easily. It's supposed to look fresh and it does. I think it looks really, really good. So they've matched the white interior with the rose gold metal for the top surface. They call it rose gold, but it's much less pink than a lot of rose gold materials from other companies. And I'm rocking a D-brand skin on mine because seriously, this looks super fly. Marble top, gold trim, white interior. I mean, this is fresh AF. One of the few complaints I had about the previous XPS 13 was the power supply. So this finally uses a USB-C port to charge it. I know the old one could use USB-C, but it included a barrel plug as like the AC adapter. I like USB-C much more for 2018. Now the rest of the USB ports are all USB-C as well and they have a micro SD. I like the USB-Cs and they include an adapter for USB-A connections, but I don't love the micro SD slot. I feel like it's something not a lot of people will use, but it is there in case you want it. Now in terms of the Thunderbolt 3 ports, they support four lanes of PCIe and it's something that bothered some people with the previous generation, they only supported two lanes of PCIe for external GPU connections. Now you get all four. The webcam on this laptop has been updated and now supports Windows Hello for secure logins. Now it's still located at the bottom so the camera looks up your nose and the image quality isn't amazing or anything. It's kind of your standard webcam for an ultrabook, but it does keep the bezels really thin. One thing I don't like though, is that the white trim, like on the white model, that black camera cutout is a bit of an eyesore. So if you don't use your camera very often, or if you just want a more secure camera thing, you can get some privacy stickers from dbrand, cover it up and it looks a lot cleaner. The bezels on the previous XPS 13 are already really thin. These are even thinner. I think it's like 23% thinner. It's just a more immersive experience when you're using this screen. The screen itself is covered in Gorilla Glass 4 and I'm running a 1080p panel and it's bright with decent color accuracy. It does come in a new 4K panel with 100% sRGB if you need something for color accurate work. Now the performance on this thing is good as you would expect because it's an eighth gen CPU. For multi-core applications, these eighth gen CPUs can fly. I tried to run Intel XT on this laptop. It does throttle. It's kind of expected considering the size and everything on this laptop, but I had big dreams. So the thermals on this system have been changed. So this is now running a new thermal management thing called Gore Thermal Material. And I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's supposed to be some advanced material that they use in space programs and stuff. It's a good thermal solution, but it's not amazing. Like if you're hoping to go full turbo on all four cores for an extended period of time, it's not gonna happen. It will throttle. The good thing is that the fans are really quiet on idle and on full load. Gaming performance isn't amazing. It's running on Intel UHD 620. So you're gonna get some pretty mediocre frame rates unless you're playing some really light games. The keyboard feels really similar to the previous generation to me. It's a little bit different visually, like the keys are a little bit larger and the layout's changed a bit. Page up, page down have their own keys, but the typing experience feels really similar to the old one. I think a lot of people will enjoy using this keyboard. The trackpad is, I think it's identical. They might be using the exact same one. It feels good, Windows precision, glass surface. It's a good trackpad. Okay, let's take a look at the internals. It's a fast drive, PM961, user replaceable. The Wi-Fi card looks to be built on board, but it can run the Intel A265, so if you want a good Wi-Fi card, I'd go with that one. 
The battery is 52 watts. It's smaller than before. The previous generation had a 60 watt battery, but remember it's a smaller chassis. You kind of expect it to have a smaller battery as well. But the good thing is though, the battery life is still really, really good. I'm getting around 11 hours of battery life on this thing with the screen at 250 nits. All right, the speakers, they're mounted on the side, so they're positioned reasonably well. I prefer them to be kind of on the keyboard facing up, but this is a decent location. It does have new software, but I feel like the actual audio quality and clarity sounds pretty much exactly the same as the previous generation, which is good, but not great. The coil wine. So people that are interested whether or not this thing has coil wine, I have one unit, it's a review unit. So the this unit did not have it, but the responsible thing for me to say is that I can't tell yet. I feel like I would need hundreds of XPS 13 to be able to tell you whether or not this thing has an issue or not, but this particular unit did not have it. Overall, great laptop. I think that Dell did a really good job this year. And honestly, there's so little to dislike about this thing, but there's one thing I wanna get off my chest. This was a redesign. They had an opportunity to make something completely brand new in aesthetics and in appearance. And they went with something that is just, it feels too familiar to the old one. So the old one was a good design, but if you didn't know that this was a new version and you had the black version, particularly like the black and silver version of this, you wouldn't be able to tell immediately that it was a new version. That it was a new updated version of the XPS 13 because it looks so similar. It is thinner, smaller, lighter, all that stuff. But I mean, you could have done something crazy, Dell. You could have made something like completely fresh. Now, I know Dell is more conservative company. They're kind of like business oriented, enterprise oriented. So I get it. But me personally, I would have loved to see something just completely different visually, but it's a fantastic product. If you're looking for a thin and light laptop, this thing should be near the top of the list. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.